Clinton Community Church. We're so excited that you're here with us today. If you're in person, this is us letting you know that service is about to start here in a little bit. So go on and start making your way to the sanctuary. If you're in the foyer making coffee, in the breezeway having a conversation, or just now pulling up, guys, service is about to begin. So hurry up, greet someone on your way in, and make sure you're getting to your seat. If you're online, type I'm here so we know you're here and we can start communicating with you and connecting with you. Now, everyone, if you're online or in person, this is the time that you can do something amazing. This is the time that you can share the gospel with your friends and family. And it's real simple. If you're in person, pull out your phone, go to your social media and click share and let people know about our live stream going on right now. If you're online, it's even simpler for you. Just click the share button and make sure you're letting people know. Now, if you're a first time guest, we want to say thank you. So if you're in person, you're gonna have to pull out the card in the seat right in front of you. You're gonna fill it out and you're gonna take it to the blue tent at the end of service. If you're online, you're going to just type, I'm new, we're gonna contact you, get your information, and we're gonna mail you a gift to say thank you. If you have a prayer request, you can do the same thing. Take out the gray card, fill it out, and take it to the guest services if you're in person. If you're online, you're gonna comment, but if it's something personal and you don't wanna let everyone know, you can either message us, or you can email us at prayer at ccchurchnc.org. All right, guys, so it looks like we're going to be starting soon. So again, make sure you're getting to your seats. Make sure you're getting comfortable. And guys, we believe God's going to do something amazing in your life today. So thank you again, and God bless. Friday night, date night, I say pick out what you like, I don't care as long as you're here. Surprise, surprise, ain't that nice, same old chick flick 18th time, you know the one with that guy. Halfway through, look at you, smiling like you always do, and I can't help but just stare. Cause suddenly it hits me as I watch you make believe I wanna make this your reality And if you be my lead Well good morning church, come on stand to your feet Are we ready to worship the Lord today? If you are, put your hands together Come on, if you're with us online Thank you guys so much for worshiping with us Happy Father's Day to all you dads Don't lose hope, oh my soul, oh my soul. Don't give up, there is hope, there is always hope. And there is peace in the storm, in the storm.
Come on, sing it. Nations bow, mountains shake, not the sound, just one name. Over all, Jesus reigns. See, nations bow, mountains shake. of a God who's great and mighty, amen, the King of kings, the Father of all. Come on, one more time, give him a shout of praise. Come on, with all we have, let's sing it again. Yeah. There is a King of glory, there is a God who saves, one who is strong and mighty. Gates of heaven, lift up the shout of praise. There is a lion roar, Jesus the King of glory. serve a great God and in this next song see these last, these songs that we're singing to, together today we've been trying to plan this this set list for the last three weeks and obviously we haven't been together these last two but I believe that God is is wanting us to use these songs just to get our hearts right see we serve a king of glory but 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 God sent his son to down the cross for you and, and for me and he said that as a sacrifice and, and what we should be uh, doing is becoming more like Jesus so that we can serve and change the world. Do we believe that today? Come on, do we believe that we should be world changers today? Amen? See, it's not just about us. It's not just about my relationship with God. Obviously, that should be the most important thing for me, but that's not just it. Our job as Christians is to go to this world and change people's lives for the better. This, this world is dying and is in desperate need of a Savior. If you turn on the TV for five minutes, you will see that this world is in desperate need of a Savior. And, and our plea, our cry today should be, Father, make me more like you. Change everything that, that doesn't please you, that doesn't draw me closer to you. And I pray that God does that in this place together as we sing these songs and as we worship. God, I just pray that you would do something amazing in this place of worship, in people's homes as they're worshiping with us. God, we would be careful to give you the glory. God, change our lives. Change our hearts. God, we give you all the praise. i 
I don't always understand God's ways, and sometimes in my heart I even question, look, God, is this the way that you need to work in this situation? But I know this, His ways are always better. When we get on the other side and look back, we always see how God orchestrated all the pain, all the um, challenges, all the tragedies that seem to be in our heart, and He does everything so well. This has been a tough season for many of you, for our church. Uh, we had to be out of service for the last uh, couple of weeks because of uh, COVID within some of the leadership of our church. And uh, we appreciate those of you that are live with us today, uh, being here again today. So good to be back in the house of God uh, with live breathing human beings. Uh, would you just celebrate yourself being here today? Yeah. <laughs> And for those of you that are watching online, we just we rejoice that you're with us today. Let's let's thank them for being with us today. Amen. It's just different times that we're living in, and uh, and we're just we're having to take it one day at a time, one step at a time, but trusting God all the way. And I know most of you probably have somebody or or several people in your life that are going through something really tough right now maybe sickness, maybe some kind of tragedy. And we're, gonna, we're just going to pray together in a few moments, and we want to lift those needs before him. But a couple of needs I, I really want us to focus on. One in particular, Pastor Dwayne um, has COVID. He's been in the hospital for a week. He's in great pain. We keep hoping that he'll be able to come home, but, but he's, he's just not strong enough right now. He's not doing well, and we're hoping maybe today is the day. But please, please pray for him. He's very sick. And um, he's got a tough road ahead of him um, coming, coming up. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Eddie, if you will, to come up and let us anoint him in, in Pastor Dwayne's behalf. Also, another very important um, request in that same family, Pastor Dwayne's dad, Dwayne, my brother, uh, has, has COVID. And he is in the hospital as well. Um, he was taken there yesterday, early yesterday morning. Apparently, he's had a stroke. Um, and uh, he can't use one of his arms at all. And, uh, and we just, uh, he's just asking us, please, please remember me in your prayer. Connie, his wife, who attends here and serves here so well, uh, she, needs, she needs strength. She needs some encouragement. She's, she's got a husband and a son, uh, the two men in her life on Father's Day that, that, are, that, are, that are suffering with COVID. They're both at Cape Fear Valley Hospital. And, access to them is very limited so it's just been a a a trying season a different season uh, season for our family and uh, we do want you to pray but i know many of of you have other requests as well but can i ask you those of you that um, care about pastor Dwayne, and i know all of you do but some of you that like to come up lay hands on on eddie as we're going to anoint him with all in pastor Dwayne's behalf and then uh we call always called him big Dwayne. (laughs) In my phone, it says Big Dwayne Dunning, and, and he is big, <laughs> uh, but he is a, he's a man of God. He loves God. God loves him. And uh, Rayford Dwayne does so, Pastor Dwayne does so much around here. We've really missed his influence. He's been sick for several weeks um, coming up to this. And, and we depend on him. Our church depends on him for so much. The staff depends on him. And uh, as we pray, also Joanna, um, I mean, she's, she's, this is her husband, you know, and she's having to work the church and do all she, all she can. She's been really faithful, but she's carrying a great burden. So I want you to pray for her today as well. Would you do that? So Lord Jesus, we pray, we pray for Pastor Dwayne right now. We know you're our healer. We know you have healing in your hands and there's nothing that you can't do. We don't always understand why things happen, but we know, Lord, that you do. And you're all wise and you're all loving and you're all gracious. 
And I pray, God, that you'll put your hands on him and give him healing. And give him deliverance from this great pain that he's in. And give him rest in his body. And restore his strength. We ask out of your love and out of your grace, we stand on the promises of God. You said that by your stripes we are healed. And we plead the blood of Christ. We plead the stripes of God on his life today, Lord. That that a rush of healing, will, a flow of healing will be over him. A river of healing will flow in his life today. And he'll know that he's been visited by the dynamic of your presence and the prayers of your people who are in agreement. We stand together believing and healing in Dwayne's life today. In Jesus' name, for the glory of God, in Jesus' name. We pray for his dad and we pray for Connie. And we ask God that you will help them and give them healing as well. Thank you, Lord, that we know that you're working. We know that nothing is impossible with you. And we're praying for their healing and their strength, their needs. Oh, God, just work, we pray. Show your glory, Lord. Show your power. Show your goodness, oh, God. Have your way, Lord. Oh, God, you're on our side. You're with us, Lord. You can do all things. You do all things well. You never fail, God. Oh, Lord, great is your faithfulness. <clears throat> great is your deliverance. Great is your glory. Oh, God, bring healing, bring healing. Your way is perfect. Here's this one. Here's this God. Here's what touches our lives to bring glory to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know this family isn't the only one that's suffering today. I'm sure many of you have loved ones in your family. And if you, if there's somebody that's burdening your heart, um, uh, Lee Coble, who, um, who serves in, in our services every Sunday when he could, um, he, he just lost a, a sister-in-law this morning that's been struggling with COVID for, for months. About, I mean, a long time. She lost, uh, a, her husband died a few months ago and now, and now uh, she's passed away and we just we just need to cover this family but maybe you want to lift your hand there's there's a there's a struggle going on in your family somebody needs healing just just by faith lift it up and hold it hold it up lord where you see these hands lord you see the hurt you see the pain you see the disease and the sickness that's in this world the physical sickness that we're facing and the and the social sickness that we're facing Oh, Lord, I'm just praying that you will move, oh, God, in our community and bring healing and bring hope. I pray that you'll move in our families, Lord, and bring healing and wellness. We know that there's a serious uh, spiritual sickness in our world today. <clears throat> and we're looking to you, oh, God, to bring healing and bring hope into our world, into our homes, into our lives, into our community. <clears throat> Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. We surrender to you, Lord. We trust in you. We're believing in you. Just let him work. Just, just take a moment. Surrender to him. God, send your healing. Flow, Holy Spirit, through our lives. Stir, stir us that we'll know how to pray. Give us your Holy Spirit that prays through us, that knows what the greatest of needs are. Work in us, Lord. Work through us and bless our hearts our families, bless our children, bless our parents, bless our loved ones, bless the ones that we don't even know, but we hear about them and we care about the situations they're in. Your grace be with us, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you. Hallelujah. Isn't it better His way? Let's sing that chorus again together as you go back to your seats. And let's just keep trusting, keep praying, keep believing for God to work his miracles and do amazing things to us.
can be seated. Hey Clint Community family and happy Father's Day. We are so excited to be back on campus and we're so excited about all the new faces we see on campus today. So Clint Community, can we put our hands together for all our first time guests? If you are a first time guest, we want to show you how much we are thankful that you're here with us today by giving you a free gift. And it's real easy to get that gift. If you're in person, all you have to do is fill out the gray car that's in front of you, take it out to the blue tent, and we'll give you that gift. If you're online, all you have to do is say, I'm new here in the comments. We will contact you and we will mail you that gift. Now, because we had to move some stuff around, we have to change some dates for things going on and we want to keep you up to date with that, starting with our movie night. We had planned to have it this Wednesday, but right now we're postponing it and we don't have a date to give you, so keep your eyes and your ears open on all the announcements coming up later on this month to find out when we're gonna have our movie night. Now, last weekend we were supposed to have Graduate Sunday. We moved that to next weekend and we encourage you to come out at 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. right here in the Life Center to celebrate what's going on with all our graduates. They're gonna be graduating from high school or college programs and we wanna help them celebrate this milestone. So make sure you're coming out next weekend. July 4th is actually on a Sunday this year, and we encourage you, if you're in town, to be here on campus, if you can, at 9 a.m. or 11 a.m., as we celebrate not just the freedoms we have in this country, but the freedom we have in Christ and what he's done for us. July 7th, which is a Wednesday night, we're going to be starting our Wednesday night Bible study with the pastor in the front sanctuary, and we encourage you to come out and be a part of that. That's, again, July 7th at 7 p.m., we're going to be starting a Bible study with pastor. July 11th, we're going to be having membership. Now, we were planning to have membership earlier this uh, month, but we weren't able to do that, so we put you back to July 11th, that's Sunday. We're going to be having it at 9 a.m. or 11 a.m., and we encourage anyone that hadn't gotten to sign up, maybe you thought you missed it, you can sign up out at the blue tent on the iPad, and you can become a member as long as you sign up before July 11th. Guys, again, thank you so much for being here, and before Pastor comes up on stage, we want to honor all the fathers with this video. Hey, Dad. Mom and baby are doing great. You got a baby girl? Yes, I'm <laughs> Dad. Honey. Hmm. The baby. There you go, one more. Honey, are you seeing this? Step, there you go. Good job, you did it. You ready? Give me a good hit. Give me a good hit. Good job! Yeah, go, 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 go. Daddy, don't go, Daddy, don't go. Morning, neighbor. Papa, I'm scared. You got it, buddy. Here we go. One, two, three. Go ahead. Yeah, good job, bud. My girl. All right. Now with this one, you're going to have to drive really, really slow. <laughs> We're so thankful for this food you've given us. It would be a blessing to our body. I'm so sorry. I'm just glad you're okay. Now, I want her home by 10. Yes, sir. Don't try anything. Dad, stop. Hi, man. Hi, hi. Wow, what's gotten into you? Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. Let's give our dads a real round of applause. Come on. Yeah. Guys, bring back any memories to you. I think I could identify with every one of those things. <laughs> I was just waiting when you let go of the bicycle to hear this big crash, you know, and that's look on your face. Uh-oh. Uh, that's kind of how my father went, but uh, it's good to see you today. We're going to continue our series on ridiculous faith, ridiculous faith. When I talk about ridiculous faith, it's like, it's like when, you, when you tell somebody you got something on your heart, you know, you really want to do, and you, you tell your wife or you tell your friend, that this is what I want to do, and they say, that's ridiculous. You know, it just kind of lets the air out of you, you know, and that kind of thing. But the kind of, because they know that you're talking about the impossible, it's just not going to happen. 
But, but God works in the realm of what we think is ridiculous. And things that are just so out of the ordinary, so unusual. And that's the kind of God that we serve. And the Bible has all kinds of illustrations, stories about miracles that he worked that were, it was, if I said God was going to do this, you would say that's ridiculous. He would never do that, but he does. And all that he does is right. And all that he does is good. All that he does is holy and powerful. And all he does is to bring glory to his name and blessing to those that follow him. And so I want to I want to say to you today we're going to we're going to look at the next miracle and and we're going to talk to the men and we're going to talk to the fathers and if you're a man here you're not a father we're talking to you too if you're a woman here don't just point at the at the male person next to you and say or hit him with the elbow he's talking about you you know you better listen but I want you females to listen as well because uh, the message I have is, is really for everybody. But I, I wanted to talk specifically today about, about men and, and, and about losing our spiritual edge. Losing our spiritual edge. Um, there's some things in our life that, that get lost so easy. And some of the things that we lose are, are things that... They're either, they're, they're, it's one of two things, something we never use, you know, we put it somewhere and forget about where we put it. And then there's those other things that are so common in our life that, that we tend to lay it down anywhere and everywhere, and then we, we, we lose that. And just the familiarity of it makes us lose it. So, and, and sometimes, sometimes we just lose things because of um, the unseen, the unforeseen, things that we didn't know were going to happen, and, and they just, they just happen. So, so let me talk to you today, uh, men, Father's Day, um, a great job as a, as a father, I'm sure, that you're doing. You, God has given you a tremendous gift in your children, but he's also blessed you with gifts as a father, as a parent. I believe God has equipped every father with the necessary gifts, the necessary talents, uh, the, the wisdom to, to raise their children. If we'll, if we'll follow God's guidance and follow his rules for, for um, living out the office that he puts us in. And so, so all of us have a position, men, of, of, of influence. In fact, regardless of if we're male or female, we're all in an in area of influence. And sometimes we, we do, men, we, we do depend on our wives to do a lot of the influencing and, and I'm afraid we abdicate some of our authority and our responsibility by expecting our wives to do all of the, uh, you know, spiritual training and all of the uh, caretaking. And, and, and so we're, we're really not being used as God designed us to be used uh, sometime. And uh, we need just, you know, we need to remind ourselves, you know, there are responsibilities that God has given to me that I need to, to step up to. I believe so much of what we're facing in our world today is, is, is not because of, of, of the politics or, 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 or the you know, disease, uh, pandemic or whatever, but me, really the root of it could, could go back to, have we done our responsibility as leaders? Have we taught our children the things they're supposed to know? Were we taught? growing up, what is right and what is wrong, and, and how we should respond to certain situations in our life. And have we received or, or accepted what God has given to us spiritually? Because I believe God gives to us all this, this, this spiritual power in our life when we trust Him as our Savior. And, and, and that spiritual power can be a, the cutting edge in our life, in raising our kids, and in, in living a life, and, and being an influence in the world, and then being ready to, to go to be with Jesus one day. So, so we're going we're gonna, to uh, look at some of the gifts and the talents that God has given to us. God provides all of us tools, tools to do the job. And uh, we have to use the tools that, that he gives to us. One of the problems for us men, I mean, how many, how many of you uh, wives say, I've got knives in my, in my drawer in the kitchen that are bent because my husband tried to use that cutting knife uh, for a screwdriver, you know? Not, not use it. Well, I, I couldn't find a screwdriver, so I had to use the first thing I could get. And then and there's damage, and then... And then our marriage falls apart because of it, but uh, it takes some, you know, we have to use our, 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 uh, 
our, our skills of, of charm to get, get our marriage back together. But I'm just saying that God has given us a toolbox, and we, we talked about that a few months ago, and tools to use. And if we use them, we're blessed if we don't. But we, there's th- two things. S- tools have to be used responsibly. They have to be used with responsibility, and they have to be treated with care so that they will be there when we need them and know when we can get them out and, and use them. And God, God gave us gifts to be used, the gifts that you have. It's not because you're so good. It's because God gave it to you, right? I mean, who can say, I made me, I made myself? Nobody can say that. You know, the, the, the turtle on the fence post. He can't say, I got here by myself. Everybody has been helped, and we've all been helped by God in every gift. If, if you're extremely bright, if you're extremely talented, uh, if you're extremely uh, brilliant, you know, it's just you can't take responsibility of that yourself. You've got to realize God gave you that. doesn't make you better than somebody else. If you think you are, God might take it away from you and give it to somebody else, you know. So be responsible with the gifts that you've got and, and, and keep them safe and use them as they're supposed to be used and don't let them slip away from you because one of the problems with tools is we do one or two things we either lose them or or we neglect them and they get rusty or they get damaged or or whatever and and they become unusual uh, unusable again Uh, spiritual gifts are that way you know we can we can just forget that we have a tool um, guys, you ever bought a screwdriver and, and because you didn't have one, as soon as you got it and you went to put it in your toolbox, you, you had another one just like it. <laughs> you finally found the one you, that you lost because we lose things and, 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 and it just puts us in a bad place. But, but the other thing is we, we abuse things. And, and, and when we abuse things, we, we also become a loser. So the story I'm going to talk about today, you're, you're asking, probably thinking, where in the world is he going with all of this? The story we're going to talk about today is the story of, of Elisha, another miracle that he worked. He, he, had, this, uh, he had this school of ministry um, that was taking place, and uh, he was... Uh, it was growing so fast. People wanted to be part of, it was a, a school of the prophets, and they wanted to be part of that. And so Elisha opened up, I think he opened up his house and allowed them to come to, to his place. And it kept growing and growing and growing until it got to the point that, that they, couldn't, they couldn't live there anymore. They needed uh, bigger space. And they didn't have a building large enough they didn't have money enough to build it so they had to do a do-it-yourself building project has anybody ever been involved in one of those it doesn't always work out the way that you you like it but they these guys came in wanting to be preachers but now they've found out they've got to be uh, carpenters and and they don't even have tools in fact in order to get the job done, they had to borrow some of their tools that they were using in order to, 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 to build this. So, so the, the message that I want to share with you today is, is the message of, of one of the tools that was borrowed, and then it got broken while they were using it. It was probably didn't look quite like this, but uh, all of you guys know what this is. All you women know what it is as well. Um, when I, I think, anybody not know what this is? Uh, okay. Um, and so when I walked on campus, got out of my car and was walking over here, you should have heard the comments and everything. Pastor is preaching a very serious sermon today. And uh, if you don't repent, you're going to meet the Lord. And you want to, you want to meet him prepared, you know. Um, obviously, that's not why I have this here. But this thing can be a very big help in your life if you need it. But it also can be very dangerous if you don't take proper care of it and if you don't respect it and you don't examine it you see if you'd look at this axe it it will chop it's got a fairly decent edge on it the head looks good on it you can't see this but there's a crack that's going going down from here all the way down to here and it's not going to last very long you know it's just it's not going to be safe to use now I might say well it's my axe I can do what I want to with it and when I get chopping with it and this does break and that axe head flies off and hits somebody else then it's that that's on me isn't it because I didn't take care of the tool that I that I had and so what what I want to talk about today is is the need to 
respect what God has placed in our lives and the fact that sometimes we do lose axe heads in our life. Sometimes axes do break. Sometimes instead of hitting it on the cutting edge, we hit it on the handle and it breaks it, you know. Sometimes it, it gets slippery up here and the axe head can come off and on and you have to put an extra nail in it, you know, drive it in to keep it tight there. If you see somebody, see somebody with too many nails in that, in that axe head, you probably don't want to get around them when they're, they're chopping uh, with it. Uh, but to get it to do what it's supposed to do, uh, it requires us to be very, very observant of the tool that we have, appreciative of it, know how to use it, know when it needs repairing, know when, when, when it's safe and when it's not. Know if we've got it or, we, or, or we've lost it. So let me take you to, let me take you to the, 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 the story that's in uh, it, um, First Kings, I'm sorry, Second Kings chapter 6. And it reads this way, Second Kings chapter 6. It's about a, 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 something that got lost that required a miracle, a miracle for, it to, for us to get it back. It takes, sometimes it just takes a miracle. Sometimes you can just put another nail in it, you know. Sometimes... It's just gone, and we need it back. What I want you to think about during this message is what has God given to me that I'm supposed to be using for the kingdom of God? Fathers, I'm supposed to be using it to build my family, to train my kids, to bless them. Husbands and wives, what, what God has given to me to, to make our family strong and am I, am I using it in the right way? Am I taking care of it? Do I have respect for it? Or is there some, some parts of my marriage or parts of my fathering, uh, parenting, that, that has gotten loose and I need to, I need to fix it before yeah, so I'm not something it. No, bad when you happens? When you got drafted, you signed so, up for it. You have no choice. And so these men are, are building, they're, they're, they're building a building together. And, and, uh, and uh, as they were cutting down the tree to verse 5, it says, so, so he went with them and they went to the Jordan. They cut down trees. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. And he cried out and said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. Apparently there was a river nearby where the trees were growing. And as he was chopping, the head slipped off of the handle that he had, and it, it went into uh, apparently very deep water. And, and it, was, it was obvious to him, it was obvious to everybody else that that head couldn't be recovered. And so there's a problem here. Building has stopped. And, and, and not just that, but the, the, the axe head that was lost didn't really belong to them. It was, it was borrowed. So they went to the man of God, and he says to them, where did it fall? And he showed them the place, and, and he took a stick and threw it in there, and he made the iron float, the axe head. All of us know the axe heads don't float. There, there's nothing that can even come close. To, the current can't even move them hardly. But, but it, he, 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 he threw in a stick, and it made the iron float. Therefore, he said to him, pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand, and he took it. Pick it up for yourself. And he reached out his hand and he took it. How do we get our spiritual edge? Do, do you have a spiritual edge? I believe all of us do. Man, woman, all of us, every one of us. Uh, God has designed the spiritual design for us that enables us to do what our life purpose is. And, and we're just going to call it our spiritual edge, our, our axe head in life uh, this morning for a few moments. And, and when the man lost his axe head, he said, uh, Alas, master, this is a terrible master. What are we going to do, master, for, for it was borrowed? And the point that I want to make is that everything good we have in our life isn't really ours. It's borrowed. Amen. It's borrowed from God. The breath you breathe, the life you live, the family that you have, the wife that you have, the husband that you have, the children that you have, they are on loan from God. They're on loan from God. Blessings on loan from God. Think about all the blessings in your life that just, they're, they're really just not yours, even though I say that this is my home or, or, or this is my ministry, but they're all God's and they're blessings in our life. 
our gifts, our skills, our, our financial resources, our, our, our wisdom, um, even other people in our life, our church and people that are teachers and, and, and influencers, our families and, 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 and the blessings of, of people that are in our lives. But it goes beyond there. God himself, his presence in our life, his power in our life, his, his promises for us. It's all, it's the plans and the purposes that he has. They all belong to him, and so I can't alter them. I've got to use them in the way that he gave them to me. They're my blessings that God's given me, but they're on loan from God. Blessings on loan for God. He's given me an axe head so I can, so I can build something. So that I can make something happen. So I can have a place to live. And I'm responsible for what he has given me. So always remember, never take credit for life. Don't take credit for your intelligence. Don't take credit for your your, your strength. Don't take credit for your beauty. Don't, Don't take credit for all that. Remember, it's on loan from God. Because your strength will fail one day. Your beauty will fade one day. Your intellect will get messed up one day. It will. It will. And it's all on loan from God. So, so use it in a way that when you see God face to face and give an account of your life, you don't have to be ashamed and just hand him an axe handle without a head on it and say, sorry, God, this is, this is how it is. It's all on loan from him. But how do we lose our spiritual head, edge? This, this is probably the bigger point I want to make today. It says in, in chapter 6, verse 5, but as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Notice this. He lost it not because he was lazy, not because he didn't use it. He lost it while he was using it. He lost it while he was using it. Now, if you've ever, ever used an axe with a loose axe head, you know it's loose. I mean, it's just obvious, isn't it? You're just hoping it won't come off. You're just putting another nail in it. You're just trying to be a little more careful, but you, but you know that there's a problem. But this guy, while he was cutting while he was working. See, sometimes we get so preoccupied, even with good things. So many preachers today are, are occupied with building the kingdom of God, with doing the work of God, with, with building great churches and seeing people say, but they're not, they're not taking care of their own spiritual life. And, and the axe head of their life is getting loose. And, and, and one day it comes off before they even realize what's happened. See, our our, our giftings, our skills, our our resources, our people in our life, our families, all of these are are ours. God's presence and his word and and his giftings, it's, it's all ours, but it's easy for us while we were working, while we are working for it to get loose and slip away from us, and, and then we've lost it while we're doing things, while we're building our life. Sometimes it happens, as, uh, and, and one of the signs is that we're, we've lost our joy in what we're doing. You know, when you start building a house, I'm, I'm sure if you've ever done that, you, you know it's, it's kind of thrilling to begin with, kind of exciting, but you know, halfway through, you, you're starting to get tired and you don't see the end in sight. Um, we lose our joy. We lose our joy. That's a sign that the axe head's getting loose. Um, when we abandon our spiritual disciplines, we're not praying like we used to pray. We're not, we're not meditating like we used to meditate. We're not reading God's Word. We're not attending church. We're not listening to uh, worship music like we, like we used to. Something's, something's getting loose in our lives. And, and, and it's so subtle sometimes. It comes on so, so bit by bit. But we don't even realize there's a big change in our life until, until the crisis comes. And the axe head goes flying off. We, we abandon our spiritual disciplines. We, uh, uh, and sometimes we use what God has given to us for the wrong purpose. We use our gifts, gifts for our own betterment, not for the kingdom of God's betterment. It's, it's sort of like using uh, axe. Axe does a good job of chopping down a tree, but it does a pretty poor job of, of digging a ditch. You know, it's hard. <laughs> and and and. You, you, you might want to use it sometimes like a sledgehammer, but, but sometimes it's just, it's just not built for some things to be done. And so we misuse the gifts that we have. We misuse the blessings God has given to us, and we use them for the wrong purposes. It's easy for us to, to, to use our spiritual gifts for our own betterment, not the betterment of the kingdom of God. 
But I think the biggest, the biggest problem is the reason we lose our, our, our cutting edge is because we fail to examine the tool. We, we, we fail to look. Uh, we, we don't think it would happen to us. We think our axe head is on tight, but we've never really looked to make sure. We think the handle is secure, and, but we, we fail to just see that little crack that's going down it. Someone told me after first service, you need some duct tape to put on there. I've, I've had those kind of hatchets too, or axes. We need more than duct tape, don't we, folks? We need more than that. But, but we need to examine. I, I see there's a problem. Listen, I'm not going to do any hard work with this because of the, the bad handle that's in it. And if any of you are concerned about me or about you, I have another axe that's, that's, that's totally it's made, out of, it's made out of fiberglass or something. And it's, it's probably going to be very difficult to break. Um, and, and, uh, but even, even with that, you have to examine things, right? What are you talking about? Why is, why is this important, Pastor? Because there's some of us that are living our lives, but we're not examining our lives. There's some, some of us that, are, that say we're, we're a very friendly and outgoing person, but, but we're not examining what that friendliness means and what that outgoingness means, you know? Sometimes uh, uh, we, we, we live a life of character, but sometimes our character begins to get a little bit loose and we don't realize and there's a sign there that something's wrong, but we don't know what it is. And so we start chopping harder and trying harder, but there's something loose in our life. And before we know it, the ax head has come, out and come off and our, and, and our character has, has been broken. And we've, we, we've done something that we shouldn't have done. And, and we, we, we get frustrated at ourselves that, that we let that happen. We don't know how it happened, but it could have been avoided had we looked at our life very, very early on. Listen, self-examination. Test your spirits. Test, test your spiritual life with God. Test, test your feelings and your emotions and, and examine them and, and be sure they are where they're supposed to be, aligned with God. Be sure you understand what you are doing in life and understand if your spiritual life is slipping or not. We need a strong spiritual life to live in the kind of carnal, wicked world that we live in today. Somebody needs to help me here. How many of you know we live in a difficult world to live a pure spiritual life? How many of you know that? Amen. But how many of you know we need to guard our lives? We need to examine our lives every day and be sure that we're walking in the straight and narrow. Men, to be the best father you have, may, may your character be unquestionable. And the way that you teach your children, may what you tell them be uh, align itself perfectly with God's will and, 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 and allow them to, to grow up with a, a, someone that guides them in the right way and shows them how to make the hard but the right decisions. So... How are you doing as a father? How are you doing as a mother? How are you doing as a, as a Christian, as, a, as an employee? How are, how are you doing as a, a boss or as an employee? Or how are you doing as a follower of Christ? Is everything tight? Is everything working okay in your life? How do we lose our ax heads? I think most of the time uh, we just fail to examine our lives. We fail to get on the altar and just pray and seek God and let him shine his light in our life. And, and then when we mess up, the, the tendency is, oh, no, it's hopeless. Because I tell you what, when you mess up, and especially if it's a public mess up, it's hard to, it's hard to recover an ax head, isn't it? And it's, it seems to be impossible. But here's what I want, I want you to go home with today. The impossible is possible with God. Amen. And God is in the business of helping us be recovered from our most drastic mistakes, from losing our act. God is in the business of restoring the axe heads. And he tells us, here, here's how we recover our lost spiritual edge. So the man of God said, where did it fall? And he showed him the place. He could go back. He could keep going back. And I, I see where, where it started. Sometimes we look right at the event. I, I, I was just walking down the road, and all of a sudden I, I, I tripped and fell. No, usually... Almost always, you, you, you're moving up towards something, right? And, and the problem is growing. And, and so he says, where did, it, where did it actually fall? And, and he showed him the place. And so he cut off a stick and threw it in there. And it made the uh, iron float. It actually, so 
Here, here's, here's how you recover. First of all, you got to recognize the worth of what you just lost. If you just, oh, it's just an ax head. I've got plenty of them. Then there's no big deal. But it's, if it's all you've got and it's been barred and you're going to have to stand before God and give an account for it, you need, you need to, to recognize the worth of what you've lost and then confess. He goes almost immediately and says, I, I've lost it. I've lost it. And I don't know what to do. It's in the, in the water. And so Elisha says, well, you've confessed and, and, and you feel like it's impossible. But I want you to know nothing is impossible for you because there's a man that's coming into this world someday. His name will be Jesus Christ and he will die on a cross. He will die on wood. And so he takes some wood and throws it into water and throwing the cross into that water, it makes the problem of this man's life float. And he says, you just reach out now and take it and receive it back to yourself. Listen, the cross of Christ is the answer. The cross of Jesus is the answer. You may, you may think that, that counseling or you may think that, 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 that spending time or, or doing all these other things that we try to fix our problems with is, is, is helpful. And it is helpful. But the answer ultimately is the cross of Christ. Apply it to the impossibilities of your life. There's a lot of stuff we can do, must do. But when an axe head is at the bottom of a muddy river, you need a miracle. And when your spiritual life is in the toilet, you need, you need a miracle from God. Amen? You need a miracle. And God is a God that works miracles because he loves to take the impossible and make it possible in our lives today. Come on, give God glory. There's something in your life right now that may seem, that may seem impossible, but I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you, the way of the cross will bring back what is lost and what is, has just totally left any expectation, and God is going to do something absolutely, ridiculously wonderful in your life when you put your faith and trust in Him and you be obedient to Him. Amen. He threw in the cross, God's throne, God did His work on the cross, but then He looked at that man and He said, there's, there's something that you've got to do, you got to Reach out and pick it up. <laughs> that's, that's not hard after God's got it floating, but, well, you know, there, there, there's our part, isn't it? There's God's part, and then it's our part. God's part is the miracle. Our part is reaching out and accepting the miracle for ourselves and being res restored. And so this man that had lost it, he had lost his right to be a worker. He had lost his right to be a, a, a prophet of God. He lost something that he couldn't replace that was very expensive in that day. God gave a miracle in his life. And he says, I'm going to give you something. This sounds ridiculous. But see that floating axe head? Reach out and take it. It's yours. It's yours. Everything's going to be all right. Some of you need to know everything's going to be all right. Some of you need to know that it's going to work out. But you've got to trust Jesus. You've got to trust his death and resurrection. Remember, Christ went down into the earth he died for our sins and he rose again. And in his rising from the dead, he rose, the Bible says, with healing in his wings. He rose with a victory in his wings. And no matter how bad it gets and how impossible it gets, God can make iron swim in your life. It's impossible. Maybe it is. It is impossible. God works in the area of the impossible. Everybody say that with me. God works in the area of in the impossible. God works in in impossible situations. Believe him, trust him. Give God that place and let him start your life back again. And, and build the house now. Don't just, don't just settle it with God, but put the ax back on the handle and start building the house of God, the place of God, the life of God that you were setting out to be able to begin with. Think about it. Seems like sometimes it's all over, but no. It's just, it's just a get the miracle. Reach out and take what God has for you, and then get right back on track again. And you're going to see the end. You're going to see the victory. Not only that, but it's going to be better in the end because you'll never forget where God brought you from. You'll never get that swimming ax head out of your, out of your mind. It will always be there. It'll all, it, when you see it, when you experience it for yourself, when, no, the, the, the more impossible it is, the more powerful it will be in your life as you journey for Him, bringing healing and hope in your life. Let's pray together. Lord, 
we admit that there's things in our life that aren't as tight as they should be or where they should be. We confess that we have lost stuff in our life, spiritual things. We confess that we have lost responsibility in our life. We've lost character maybe in our life. We confess it to you, Lord, because we know that when we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We confess, Lord, and we trust you, Lord, to take what we've lost and replace it in our life. Right now, in Jesus' name, we reach out and take it back. Why don't you do that in your mind? In your spirit right now, just reach out and take back what's lost. God, I take it back. God, I receive it back. I take hold of it. Say it with me. Lord, I take hold of it. Say it with me. Lord, take hold of it. I take hold of it. I'm trusting you for it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the miracle. Thank you for the miracle. I bless your name. I glorify you. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I reach out. I receive it. Not only that, but I'm going to start using it again to build the kingdom of God for your praise and for your glory. While everyone's praying, if you're here today and you, you, you just, you don't have a relationship with God. You don't have the miracle working promise in your life. Would you just trust him right now and just say, Jesus, my life was down in that water. I pray that as you came forth from the grave, that I I can come forth from the grave and I can have new life in you. I need eternal life. Would you trust him right now? Lord, save me. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross and forgiving me of my sins. Save me. Give me a new life. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to take up your promise. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to take up my cross. I'm going to follow you. Would you do that? If you're praying that prayer and while no one's looking around, everybody's praying, 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 lift your hand and say, today is my day of salvation. I'm going to trust God for eternal life. I'm going to trust him right now in this house. Maybe you're someone that you've lost something in your life that you know it's lost. You know it's not where it needs to be. But you're going to confess it right now to him. Lord, I've lost my axe head. I want it back. I want it back. I reach out and I receive it. Would you just receive it? You may say, but I've got to work on this. No, you don't. You just receive it and then you work on it. Receive it. Receive his cleansing. Receive his forgiveness. Receive his power. Just let it happen in your life right now. Don't hesitate. Don't put it off. Receive it. Let him work in you. Be glorified. We give it all to you, Lord. We give it all to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Praise your name. If you accepted Christ as your Savior, you can look up now. If you receive Christ as your Savior, we have someone that one that will be up here at the front of the altar to, to pray with you and help you on your next steps. Um, if, if you just need special prayer, um, we have a team of people that are more than willing to pray with you, walk with you in prayer, and see God do great things. If you're watching online, please, please make your request known, and we'll respond to it. We'll pray for you, and we're going to serve the Lord together. And, folks, we need a miracle. How many of you know we need a miracle? Put your hands together. How many of you believe we're going to see a miracle? Come on. How many of you believe we're going to see axe head swim and God's name be glorified in this church? Let's give him praise. Come on, one more time. Give him all the praise. Yes. Praise God. Come on, stand to your feet. Give more you means less me. Take everything. Yes, oh. Hey, thank you guys so much for being here today and worshiping with us. It is our privilege to have you guys as our guests. There are some first-time guests in the house, so church family, make them feel welcome. Come on, make them feel welcome. There you go, there you go. Hey, also, don't forget to uh, give as you guys worship through your tithe and offerings. There's the boxes at the back doors where you guys can give through text to give 
online on our website or you guys can swing by the church and do that. Also, it is Father's Day, so one more time, can we make all the dads uh, just give them a, a round of applause for who they are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you are a father, uh, there's a small gift for you guys outside underneath the breezeway just to say thank you for being a dad this morning. With that being said, thank you guys so much for being with us today. Be safe. We will see you guys Wednesday night on our Wednesday Night Live. And until we see you all again, have a good one.